Hello everybody, welcome back to some more early morning barking, talking about BPD and NPD by somebody that has both. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and there may well be some socially things scrolling past you on the screen right now that you can do and follow me on. This is a little video series I like to call Rich needs about four grand's worth of gear so he can do videos outside of his office and away from home. I need a new laptop and stuff like that. But hey, here we are, we're doing it this way because quite frankly, even I get bored of doing it the other way. Um, anyway, I'm here to talk about continuing with covert narcissism. It's something I do a lot and it's what makes me, it's the thing that annoys me about me the most, I think is the best way of putting it. So covert narcissism, a sort of subset of MPD, right? We have covert, we have grandiose, there are lots of others as well, sort of subsets that we all fit into one way or another. And they all really talk about the different ways our narcissism plays out in our day-to-day -day lives. And there's, I don't know, from what I can gather, there is debate as to how many of these there are and what they are. But nobody seems to disagree over the existence of covert and grandiose narcissism. And to sort of recap, covert narcissism is the covert kind. It kind of stays more inside and is more directed at ourselves. This is the stuff that plays up with entitlement a lot of the time, and that's how it affects me. So, in my own example, covert narcissism, I feel I deserve so much. And it's not material possessions or, or things like that. It's things like notoriety, fame, fortune, all these things, the stuff that you want with your MPD, right? And when these things don't come, because you don't deserve any of them, um, then it tends to hit really hard right? Because you think, you believe, you believe it all. It's, it's your reason for getting up in the morning. All this, I deserve all this stuff. I will get my huge YouTube channel. I'll make millions of pounds doing it. And maybe I'll be offered a television series off the back of it. That's how it should go. And in podcasting, it, when I was doing that for so long, it was, it was there then. It was, where's my own show on TV? Where's all this other stuff that I deserve? And I'm doing this, this should get me noticed, right? Why people aren't looking at me. People are idiots because they're not looking at me and so on and so on. And you see the slippery slope you can go through and just get angrier and angrier and angrier, both at yourself and at other people. And before you know it, you're caught up in this, don't want to do that. Don't care anymore. It's rubbish that. All this stuff that we have to tell ourselves to not care about something. When the truth is, we care massively. It's hurting us. It's it's like a pin sticking in somewhere. This little jibe that all the things you want, all the things you think you deserve because you're so amazing, they're not coming because we don't want to earn them, right? I'm not saying that we're not capable of having great big things, of doing wonderful things, of getting that notoriety or whatever it is that we're we want, but we're not going to get it by just thinking we should have it, right? That's not going to help. I think I should have all this stuff. Great. I, that's fine. I need to find enough other people to agree with me on that, right? And that's where the problems come in. This is almost an episode on sort of narcissistic block, which I was going to do a little while ago and kind of found out I did something like it a couple of years ago where you think everything is okay. You think everything is fine. I don't need to do that work today. I don't need to put out a video today. The last one will carry me through to the next one. And you stop working. You stop doing that stuff that will maybe eventually get you to that point that you think you deserve to be at. In my own case, if I don't make videos, I, that's it, isn't it? I've got to make videos. That's the very least thing I have to do. I have to make these videos, you have to watch them, and that will hopefully spread the word of my videos, grow my audience, all of this stuff. But if I don't, if I don't do that, then that's not going to happen. And sometimes 
the disappointment of it not happening already makes me not do it. Does that make sense? Why am I still having to make these videos? It's been a couple of years now. All those new channels that have come up are just bigger than mine already. There's no point in me bothering. All of this stuff, it just lumps on and weighs you down and you get heavier and heavier and eventually you can't function because you thought you deserved everything just handing to you on a plate. When in fact, nobody deserves that. Nobody at all. Some people annoyingly do get it right? And that's the unfair way that the world is concocted, you know? This is always my example in the idea of deserving things. Nobody deserves anything. That's the thing. The concept of deserving things is stuff we tell the children to get them to behave. In real life, Donald Trump was president of the United States. Deservedly so? Mm, don't, don't feel that way myself. You know, how many people who are astronomically wealthy deserve that? Probably very few, if any, arguably. And yet we think we deserve so much sometimes. I know I do. I, I want that fame and notoriety. I want you to all, like, shh, Rich is talking. Let's listen to Rich. Rich has got all the answers. Rich is amazing. Rich is our leader. All of that bullshit. It's all there, it all wants to happen, but I've, I've learned that it is rubbish. It's all entitlement, narcissism, MPD, whatever, and it's covert. Grandiose narcissism is far easier to spot, right? That's, that's being the guy in the room that everybody's looking at, that person, you know, grandiose narcissism. The key is in the name, but covert narcissism. It's not like I'm being a narcissist and hiding under tables. That's not what it is. I'm being a narcissist about myself internally. I'm internalizing it all and I'm getting angry internally because I'm not actually getting what I feel I should just be given because it's me. And ironically, as I say, that, that stops it coming together altogether, right? That, that stops anything happening because I need to work. I'm the one who needs to get on and do that. And the temptation to get angry at my audience. You don't like me enough. It's your fault. You're not sharing my videos enough. You're not all hitting the like button enough. Why aren't you all subscribing to Patreon, etc., etc. All the whiny shit. The stuff that you're not supposed to say. Right? When it comes out, it feels like you're one of those Tinder profiles that says, does this at work? I don't get any likes. Like, yeah, it works. You just don't get any likes. You know, it's that whiny side of narcissism. Why haven't I got my thing that I deserve? Nah. I hate it. It's easy to spot yourself doing it. You sound like a nine-year-old, basically. You sound like a child when you do it, and I do. We all do. It's what it is. It sucks. It's ridiculous. But it doesn't stop us feeling it. We know it's not true. We know that these things aren't other people's fault. But it takes us a while to get there. It takes us a while to realize that, to stop blaming other people. I've blamed other people for my failings for years. Right? And it's not until someone asks you, that thing that went wrong, did you really do everything you could have done? Really? And you're forced to answer, actually, no. No. And okay, yeah, you were fighting a couple of personality disorders, whatever, but at the same time, you didn't do everything you could, so maybe you don't deserve the thing. Maybe you could have worked harder. Maybe you could have done more, because that day that you did nothing, sitting down thinking, I've done plenty, I'm me. Yeah, it doesn't get you anywhere and it doesn't help. <sighs> you have to power through it. You have to say, am I really giving it my all, whatever it is, whatever we're trying to do, whatever we're trying to achieve? Am I really putting my best into it? Am I trying to blame other people? And giving yourself the personal rule of just absolutely not blaming other people for anything at all. 
right? When, when you're playing a video game and the next level is harder, is that the game's fault? Or do you just suck it up and go, well, it's level two, of course it's harder. Now I have these other things to deal with. And you get on because you're playing the game. And covert narcissism sometimes feels like the equivalent of moaning that level two is harder than level one. And really thinking, I should just be able to go straight to the end because I'm so good at this, right? And you want to say, yeah, if you're so good, then you can do level two and three and every level between that and the end, can't you? If you're that good. Trouble is, we aren't. That's the, the whole point of it, right? We're not as good at the game as we think we are. We just want everybody to think we are. And when they don't, when we don't win, when that evidence smacks us in the face and our little house of cards comes tumbling down, it hurts and we throw tantrums and we get upset and we take our ball home and we stop doing stuff. We give up trying because it's easier to do because those people made us give up trying, didn't they? Wasn't our decision. Yeah, right. So that's carrying on with covert narcissism. It can be a challenge. It can be an extra hurdle in the face of adversity. But that's what these personality disorders are, right? I mean, they're the, the extra hurdle. When there's something else difficult to deal with, we're also doing it and carrying this weight with us. So covert narcissism is a big, heavy weight. And I don't like it. Anyway, you take care. I hope you're okay and having a good weekend and all of that. And I will see you later with more videos and stuff like that. Take care. See you later. Bye.